But today's video, I want to talk about knives. Wives with knives. <laughs> That's the title of this uh, video today. Good afternoon. My name is Tom. I come to you from the rustic log cabin in northern Maine. Welcome to my cabin today. If you don't have a cup of coffee, get yourself a cup of coffee. Enjoy your coffee with me. I enjoy coffee with you. I'm sitting here in the cabin. It's a snowy, snowy day out there. It started snowing yesterday around 7 o'clock last night. It snowed on and off through the night. I got up this morning and it was really snowing quite hard. It really hasn't added up too much. Uh, we've got probably 8 inches of snow. But I guess it's supposed to snow the rest of today and into the night. So they're talking maybe a foot by tomorrow morning. So we'll see. I never put too much stock in uh, the weather forecast. <laughs> Let Mother Nature do what it's going to do. And then we will uh, we'll pick up the pieces afterwards. But today's video, I want to talk about knives. Wives with knives. <laughs> That's the title of this uh, video today. And I'm also, you saw, or maybe you haven't seen yet, I'm also having lunch. You're having lunch with me and a cup of coffee. So while I was taking time out of the day for uh, lunch and a coffee, I figured I'd bring you guys along to discuss knives and uh, my idea of knives. And none of these knives cost you uh, an arm and a leg. That's why I want to talk about knives today. But they're all very nice knives, very sharp knives, and knives that I've had for some of them for 40 years. Uh, most of the, why the title of this video is uh, Wives with Knives is because almost every single knife that I'm going to show you today was purchased by my wife and given to me as a Christmas present or a birthday present. So each one of them has our own personal story. Uh, the very first knife that I got, oh, I don't have that one here because I keep it in a safe spot at home. Uh, the very first knife that she got me was a folding buck knife. And that was on our first anniversary. And so that knife is very special to me. And I used it for probably 35 years. And then a few years ago I decided that I had so many knives that I, that I pack with me and stuff, that I decided to put that one in my uh, gun rack and save it because I treasure it so much, uh, being the first gift from my wife at such a very young age. But since then, she has purchased many, many knives. So that's what today is about. I want to talk to the new guy getting into bushcraft or the new guy that's decided that he wants to uh, go out and start... Uh, learning how to be a woodsman or or learning how to sharpen a knife or anything like that. I've already done a video not too long ago about sharpening so today's not going to be about that. That video took care of that. But what I want to talk about is good quality knives at a very reasonable price uh, for the new guy that's getting into um, being an outdoorsman. And that's what today is going to be about. One of the things, I, and, and, and size, uh, none of my knives are overly big. I do have a couple of big ones. I have one that I call it a sword, but it's a butcher knife. These are butcher knives. And let's go back and, and look at knives uh, from even, let's go back 150 years, 200 years ago, you know, when, when we truly did have uh, woods men. Uh, they lived and died by their, by their rifle or by their knife. They didn't have the access to knives like we have today. So the old woodsman, what he did is when he left the family to go out hunting for a week or a month or two months, he took the very best butcher knife that they had. They didn't have bushcraft knives that we call them today. 
they their best knife would have been a butcher knife. And and that's what he took when he went deer hunting or when he went after a bear. So that when he got the bear or got the deer or moose or whatever he was hunting, he would have the ability to butcher it and bring it back home uh, for his family. So that's kind of where I'm starting with. That's kind of my mindset when it comes to these knives. I like to think of myself as a woodsman uh, because I spend so much time in the woods and I've been doing it since I was a little boy. So, and I, I try to take some of my tips and some of my cues from what, what a woodsman would have done 150 years ago. And if a butcher knife from the kitchen was good enough for that woodsman, then it's more than good enough for me. So I'm going to start out with this knife right here. I purchased this knife at a used shop. You know, like it, it's pawn shop. P-A-W-N, not the other pawn. <laughs> Uh, my my main accent sometimes gets them too, so that it sounds kind of stupid. So, but anyways, uh, I purchased this at a at a used shop. I bought this knife. This is a stainless steel knife, full tang, wooden handle, uh, sharp, and I purchased this knife for three dollars. That's why I'm talking to the new guy getting into uh, being a woodsman or being getting into the great outdoors uh, you can go and you can purchase knives like this in lawn sales, yard sales, garage sales and shops, used shops and like I said this was three dollars I will have this knife for the rest of my life unless something happens to it outside of my control so how can you go wrong with that and I need a sheath for it. Well, in my gun collection, this is a pistol sheath. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is a pistol sheath. And look at that. It fits in there perfectly. And that's how I carry this knife. <laughs> I had this. I didn't have the gun that fitted anymore. But I still had this on the shelf. So now it is my... Uh, case for that knife. So for three dollars I've got a heck of a knife right there. Again I'm not going to use this for chopping wood. This is a meat knife. Uh, you know use the tool that it was meant for. You want to chop wood? Get an axe. You want to chop wood? Get an axe. You want to cut meat up? You get a knife. You don't go get the axe to chop meat up. You go get a knife for chopping meat. So why would you get a knife to go chop up firewood? Makes no sense to me. But anyways, that's only, you know, digress there a minute. But that's a, that's a $3 knife that will last me the rest of my life. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for a cup of coffee. <laughs> a sip of my coffee and maybe a bite of my soup before it gets cold. You guys are pulling me away from my soup. It's uh, chicken soup. I made it yesterday. I made a big pot of it. Well, you know how that goes. Now I'll be eating it for two or three days. But being a snowy day here at the cabin, I thought that chicken chicken soup would go great. I did something different with this one, and I'm going to do it again from now on because it really added a good texture to it. I start out with uh, two big pieces of chicken. And I cook it off the bone and then pull it off the bone. I uh, feed the skin to the dog. I don't like the skin in my soup. I throw in this one. I threw in some brown rice, three quarters, uh, yeah, uh, a half a cup of brown rice, two big chickens, five carrots, a couple of chicken uh, bouillon cubes. But the ingredient I threw in different this time was a package of oodles and noodles. And them noodles uh, really give it. A little bit extra in there. So I'm kind of really liking it. And I have carrots. It's hard to say if it's a chicken soup or a carrot soup because there's so many carrots. Then the other big knife that I have is this one right here. Uh, this knife, it's a big knife, but same thing. Solid, solid uh, stainless steel knife, full tang, wood handle, same thing. Why do I have such a big knife here? 
same thing. This is a butcher knife. And being that it's a butcher knife, this is the one that I use for the big lake trout that I get up here. I catch lake trout in the area of 8 to 12 pounds, sometimes a little bit bigger than that. So it's a pretty big fish to, uh, to what I like to do is fillet them. And this makes a really good knife for filleting a big fish. Or if I'm taking care of a bear hind quarter or something like that, I can cut some really big steaks. Uh, big, I can take the whole rump roast there and cut the whole thing into steaks if I want uh, because that is a regular butcher knife. So this, this is a camp knife and this is part of my camp, camp stuff. This I don't take out into the bush, but when I get back here with an animal, uh, this thing is ready to go. So what started this video, what got me thinking, is I had a birthday not too long ago. Happy birthday to me! It's time for a cup of coffee! <laughs> and being true to form, wives with knives, my wife got me some more knives. <laughs> so that's when I kind of got thinking about all the knives that she's got me over the years. And I had been researching this knife anyways, and we'd been talking to her. I didn't know she was going to buy it. But usually she's like a good wife. She's listening in the background. And, you know, Christmas presents and birthday presents and stuff like that. So I'd been researching this knife, uh, and she had been she had been following along, and she got me the knives that I was researching. And the reason I was researching them was because of quality, but also price. I really like the price of these knives, and they really look like a, a good knife. So my birthday came, and she bought them, and I, and I got them, actually got the knife in hand, and it really is a good knife. Now she bought, you can buy a set of these knives, and that's why I want to talk to the new guy getting into this. Uh, these knives, it, there's two in a package, or you can buy, you can buy, there's, a, you can, there's, there's steak knives and all kinds of stuff. But the package that I wanted was two in a package. It was a big butcher knife and a paring knife. A paring knife is something you use for peeling stuff, peeling apples. You know, it's a peeler knife. It's a paring knife. So, but, so that's what came in that package. And that package was $29 for two knives. So $29 for two high-quality knives for a new guy getting into this, this is a really good deal. That's what sparked this video today. So the two knives is this one. Same thing. Stainless steel, uh, full tang, nice, nice wooden handle on it. Uh, this is it doesn't do anything for me, but it is pretty. It's uh, got the uh, hammer dents in it, uh, just to give it a little bit of character. But you do the fingernail test. This is right out of the package. You cannot, you cannot slide that knife uh, down your fingernail. This knife is super sharp. And the other thing about these kind of knives, and, and this kind of knife, is they take an edge really quick and really fast. So, and then it came with this knife here, this paring knife. Uh, and the same thing here, just as sharp as this knife, same thing. Uh, full tang, stainless steel, wooden handle, very comfortable. But these two knives were $29. Now, this is... A big enough knife to do almost everything that you need out in the bush. This will skin an animal. These are the size knives that I use for skinning animals. Uh, no bigger than that. I, you know, they're easy to keep an edge on for skinning, and and same thing with cutting off hind quarters and all of that. Uh, same deal. You can work your way around the bone. So the and same thing with cleaning a fish. It's very awkward to clean a fish, like you like you see. I just watched a. Uh, uh, one of the uh, I've been watching alone. I don't know if you. I know you. I, if any of you follow these uh, uh, realistic channels, alone is a, is another outdoor channel, uh, and not on YouTube, but it's a uh, oh, it's a it's a one of them. You, you if you if you last the longest, you win five hundred thousand dollars. So I was watching that, but I watched them cleaning fish with knives like this. You know, little fish. You know, sixteen inch fish. This is an awkward way to clean a fish with a, with a foot-long knife. This is a knife you use for fish 16, 18, 20 inches. 
Even the big fish that I get, when you actually uh, open them up, you open them up with a small knife. It's just a lot easier. So that's why I think this right here is a perfect knife set for uh, anyone getting into the great outdoors. Like I said, these knives, I'll have, this is the new knives that she's added, so I'll have these knives forever. They're going to be here at the cabin, but this one here, I'm going to make a sheath for, or I'm going to find a sheath for it, because this one's going to become part of my uh, everyday carry. That's how much I like that little knife, and I know that it'll do uh, all the tasks that I want it to do. And just plain being a full tang knife makes that a lifetime knife uh, in my neck of the woods. The only thing I wanted to check out was, I don't know if I got it here or not, maybe. I don't know, I'd like to know if, uh, if it'll take a spark on my ferro rod. I haven't tried that yet. There you go. So here's, and the reason I thought it might is because it has a 90 degree spine on the back. So that thing throws a great spark. Here's the big one. Not as good as the small one. But this little one, this thing will work on my ferro rod uh, out in the bush. So this is going to be a nice little knife to add to my pack. And just because it doesn't have a sheath, that's not a problem. Uh, sheaths are easy to come by and they're not too awful much money to buy or build one yourself. I'm not into leather work too much, uh, so I will end up purchasing one just because. But I, uh, I've done it before for other knives that the sheaths have worn out on. But, hey, it's time for some chicken soup. If you guys don't have lunch going, or a cup of coffee, I feel bad for you. Because them carrots are <laughs> really good. And then the other knife you saw me with in the other video is this is a buck knife. I've had this knife for 25 years. It's, it's just another, I call this a butcher knife. Now I wanted to compare it, these other knives I wanted to compare to the uh, Mora. Here's a Mora knife, same thing, my wife bought me this Mora, my daughter bought me another Mora. But this knife right here cost over $50, and, and I, I hate it. I mean I use it because I call it a tackle box knife, I call it a utility knife, but this knife cost $50. You can have two of these knives for $29 with the, uh, with the bevel that I like. And $29 versus $50. So everybody thinks this is a cheap knife for the new guy getting in, but I don't think this is a good knife anyways. So <laughs> why, uh, why talk someone into a $50 knife? I guess I should tell you. <laughs> what what these knives are in case you're interested <laughs> you know uh, it's uh, forged in fire forged in fire so if you google that uh, you will find that's what I did I googled forged in fire and I came to their website and was able to uh, look at all those knives so if you're interested that's how I found them uh, I got nothing to do with that company. It's just a product that I like. You know how I don't like gadgets and all of that. Uh, so this is not a gadget knife, and I really like the price, especially for new people getting into this stuff. So, and the other thing, I've already found out how to carry the new knife. Look at that. <laughs> so I got my big knife in there. And I got plenty of room for the other one. So what's wrong with that? I don't think there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I'm enjoying the heck out of the cabin today. You might be able to hear the wood stove crackling in the background. The snow is letting up a little bit. It's still snowing a tiny bit, but we'll see. Post snow right into the evening. 
She also purchased the steak knives. And this is how the steak knives come. Now I don't have a clue on the price on these, but she picked up uh, eight of these uh, steak knives for me. And that's right here is the, is the steak knife. And it's, again, super sharp, uh, stainless steel, full tang. You, I would have no problem like, like uh, hitting the back of them with, a, with anything because you're not going to hurt that knife. But these, I can tell you right now, these are going to make a super nice knife for uh, eating bear steak. <laughs> so what I'm going to do with the, uh, uh, all the steak knives, she got me eight steak knives uh, for the cabin. So what I'm going to do with the steak knives is I'm going to build a, uh, a block for them to go in and hang them on the wall. I'll have to build that in my in, in my shop at home, but I'm going to build a small wooden block and then hang them on the wall. And when it comes time to be eating meat around here, which is moose meat, porcupine, deer, rabbit, <laughs> and bear meat. I don't think she wanted me to go hungry. That's why she got me eight of those. She got me eight because I only do dishes here once a week. When I'm out of silverware. <laughs> the main knife that I carry deer hunting, the same thing, it's not an expensive knife. This is a Winchester knife. But I do not go in the woods without this knife. Ever. A saw blade for making Maya dust for fat wood. A hook blade for gutting an animal. And a, and a blade for taking care of the animal. I lost this knife in the winter time about five years ago and I was hot sunk because I don't lose equipment and I hated losing this knife because I like this knife. It's a stainless steel knife. <coughs> well being my wife the way she is <laughs> uh, she knew I had lost that knife so within a couple of weeks she ordered this knife to, to replace that one because she knows how much I like these knives in the woods. So, the same thing here, saw blade, hook blade, and a knife. In the springtime, when the uh, snow melted, I went back to where I was uh, hunkered down that day and I found it laying on the ground. It, what happens, it fell out of my uh, sheath. Uh, the, the sheath wasn't, wasn't hooked in, I guess, and it just plain fell out. And I could not find it, so <laughs> uh, I went back and I found it in the spring. You have a great day. If you like the video like this one, throw me a bone, would you please? Subscribe to my channel, uh, hit the notification button, and uh, I look forward to meeting you. And I will see you in the next video.